When I say everybody and there's one person on it. Get some of that backlight away. Happy February. Happy Groundhog Day. Happy everything. Let me get this up on my on my tablet so I can see the chat. Simple Mills almond flour cookies are made with just the right amount of sweetness and nothing artificial ever to never slow you down. Simple Mills almond flour cookies are made with just the right amount of sweetness and nothing artificial ever to never slow you down. Almond flour cookies are made with just the right amount of sweetness and nothing artificial ever to never slow you down. Simple Mills almond flour cookies are made with just the right amount of sweetness and nothing artificial ever to never slow you down. If I just turn the sound down, can you hear me? Can't hear. Okay. Something's going wrong. Of course. I might have to start a new stream, so bear with me. One sec. Let me just see if I can. Can you hear me? Hi, David. Okay. I'll be right back. Of course. I might have to start a new stream, so bear with me one sec. Let me just see if I can start a new Hi, David. Okay. Me too. I'll be right back. Of course. I might have to start a new stream, so bear with me one sec. Let me just see if I can start a new Hi, David. Okay. Me too. I'll be right Okay, can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yay! Okay, I don't know, hopefully there's no more weird stuff going on. I'm so happy we don't have to start a new stream. Okay, woohoo! Thank you for dealing with the technical difficulties. I'm very close to you, so I'm gonna back this up so we don't need to be so close. Okay, woohoo! Hello, everybody. I'm so happy. It's good to see your guys' names in the chat. I love that. We're gonna be making marbled macarons. Thank you for putting in your votes on the poll section. I wish the community tab was a little bit easier to navigate, um, but I just wanted to let you know, in order to vote on that in the community tab, you can't be on a tablet. You have to be on either an iPhone or any type of phone, I'm assuming, with internet, and then also, or a computer. So I don't know why, but it's not set up for the tablets. I'm so happy you're here, Annette. I love seeing everybody here. We're making marbled Max. So I have a hello from Libya. Is it Libya? Libya. Um, yay, sorry. Um, we're making marbled Max because we voted for them, right? So I'm gonna show two ways of making the marbled Max. We're gonna do one where we paint up the side of our uh, piping bag, and that's one way to get the different looks and marbled effect on your macarons. And then we're also, hi Corey, it's, and then we're also going to, in a second, a second piping bag, we will do some of the drops. I'm gonna use some black, I'm gonna keep my batter white and then I'll use some black and fuchsia 
So this is gel paste. Both of them are gel paste. One is Chef Master, one is Americolor. Uh, I love both. If I'm not baking my product, like if I'm trying to color buttercream, I don't prefer Chef Master just because I get a bitter taste. Uh, but I don't get that when I bake it. And then Americolor is always great. And then I'm gonna use some Master Elite from the Sugar Art White for my plain batter. So. We're gonna make some, trying to be some um, like Valentine's-y theme with some pink, some black, some white. And we'll see how it goes. But we will get to the marbling soon. I've got some paint brushes. Oh no. I got paint brushes that are food grade. So those will go, I'll just put the paint paste gel paste right directly onto my brushes and swipe up when I am ready. I don't want it to dry on the inside of my piping bag, so I'm not going to do that yet. Hello from Texas. I saw something pop up from Texas. So let's get started. Regular recipe, just scaled down. I scaled out 66 grams of egg whites, so that's what I have. I didn't want to do any of the, like, trying to get it perfect to like 65 or anything. So. 66 and then I figured out the rest of my recipe by multiplying my base recipe which is based off a hundred grams of egg whites and I um, I'll answer your question in a second Corey and I multiply everything by 66 percent so we've got 66 grams of egg whites 85 grams of confectioner sugar and almond flour um, I forget, I think it was 50, one sec, sorry about this. Alexa, what is 66% of 90? 66% of 90 is 59.4. 59 grams of granulated sugar. And then I did about two grams of a white powder. Okay, and then you guys said, oh, where did I get the, so one brand, I just got it from like a baking supply store. This is, why am I saying, where is it? I know, Maria, I totally get that. Um, tell them to stop, put your phone on silent. Wilton, this is a Wilton brand, and then the Sugar Art has a really great, um, this is, it's way too bright, I'm sorry, you can't see. But this is a Sugar Art brush, and then Wilton has, food grade brushes, Corey. Uh, the Sugar Art has like a whole kit of them, so you get like all of the, all the brushes you need. I think Borderlands Bakery has lots of brushes too, if you wanna shop small. So yeah, just look, look at baking supply stores. They'll have a lot of the paint brushes you'll need. Okay, let's see going. I'm gonna have to like, touch my screen every once in a while because of this weird thing that started in the beginning. My, my camera's not working. I don't know if you were here when my, cam my cab cramped up when I was trying to keep my phone from going down, but that might be happening again today. So I'm just gonna hope it doesn't. Okay, I have this template just in case this is hearts um, just in case we want to do a couple hearts on a third tray I'll see how much batter we're making um, but I've got my French steel pan ready for my toaster oven and then I'm preheating my gas stove top oven or stove oven and I'll use my air bake trays for that all right enough chatter we can do this if you order on Amazon yeah, perfect. Fox's Farm, thank you for helping. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna take everything off of this so that's not an issue. And if you guys wanna mute me, I won't be offended. I tr try, hi Heidi. I try not to talk when I'm whipping, but I always end up talking. But let me put you guys down. can see better. Safety first. Yes. <laughs> Hi Dora. All right. Let's 
get into it. It like reminds you an hour after it's over. I don't get it sometimes. I'm glad it reminds you. Too. Can you hear me now? dissolved, that's when I turn my speed up to a speed two. I need some color in my teeth. Um. Yeah, David, you remember the cramping? I'm trying to get all your stuff. Is it so em uh so emmy? Did you how do you pronounce your name? So emmy? Yeah. That is an awesome attitude. Don't give up. You can do it. It takes a few tries. Or sometimes you have beginner's luck and you think it's really easy and then you try again and then all the problems pursue and you're like ah Welcome to the dark sky. Okay, I'm going to teach you. You're gonna make me like tear up, Maria. Thank you. Y'all are my social life.
Patricia, thank you. So, so I mean, yeah, it's hard to know what to do when you're trying it for the first time. I say give it another go with the French method. I'll talk to you after this. I don't want to... Ooh, fresh farm age. That sounds awesome. We're getting closer. bowl too. It's holding shape. Nice. Good for me. It's a little bit rainy here in Portland today, so I definitely went with the 4% egg white powder a little bit more with the bad weather and just for extra durability of my meringue. Okay, I feel like there was a couple people. Um, yeah, it's so hard to know. I feel like try a recipe four times or so. Sometimes I feel like six or seven, it really depends. But if you're super new, four times, if it's not working, why not try something different? But it's like starting over. So that's why it's good to keep going with the same recipe, recipe for a few times. Um, because I know it's like you want to try everything different on the next try but really it's better just to switch one thing at a time so you know like what helps and it's not a guessing game when something does go right okay so half of the ingredients are in I'm just gonna macronage or just right now it's not macronage because that's technically the deflating process so I'm just going to kind of tap those dries in and then once they're dry, I'm gonna do the full macronage process and then I'll show you guys the marbling effect. So there's many different ways to do marbling. I'll show you two different ways today. Uh, I also, what I'm not gonna do today, but I love is Zena from Majestical Macarons. She'll do like a two-tone mac and she'll put the batter in and um, she'll roll it up into a cellophane, what's that called? Saran wrap or something? Plastic wrap, that's what I'm looking for. And she'll also paint like a brush stroke on the saran wrap. And that's, I think that is such a genius idea. Cause then you get a third color and you don't have to worry about splitting your batter or anything. Okay, let's see. Hello, it's been a while. Power of chi, right? Now I forget how to pronounce. Why do I always forget these things? I think it was chi, right? Like, not shy. Okay, so I've just kind of 
patting these dries in right now. I tried Teflon sheets and... So Jay, when you're trying the Teflon sheets, um, you wanna make sure your Teflon is nice and shiny. Yeah, okay, great. Not all Teflon is the same. So you want it to have this like nice shine and it feels like plastic. At first I got these copper ones that were more fabric-like and um, they tended to be a little bit more, um, what's the good word? Unreliable, I think is the best word because they were super good at conducting heat because it was like straight copper, like fibered together. Whereas these have a coating like a silicone mat almost, but they're still supposedly better at conducting heat. Hopefully that even makes sense, but I'm macronaging now, sorry. I'm just pressing out the air and then tumbling it over itself every once in a while. Still not flowing quite where I'd like it yet. Okay, it's shiny, hmm, and it browned, let's see. With Teflon, should I lower? Yeah, I would definitely, if you, do you think that they were overcooked? Because you could do either lower your oven temperature if they're browning or bake less. But I think I would first try baking less than lowering my oven temperature just for the issue of hollow shells to make sure that you're baking at a, a good temp. I love seeing it come together too. It's so magical, especially when you're first putting the dries in and you're like, this doesn't seem like it's going very well. And then it starts to flow. Okay. So, almost there, not quite. When I try to do it towards you guys, I feel like it doesn't work as well. So I'm gonna do it towards me in a second. There we go. See how it's flowing like when I do it this way and then if I try to do it for the camera, it just like, it doesn't have the same wrist effect I don't get as much on my spatula or something. So, okay. I gotta do it my way towards me. I'm so selfish. Okay, this is great. I'm happy, still pretty thick, not flowing too fast off my spatula. If you guys watched the last video of like what over mixing does to your, your batter, it's a, it's a pretty good depiction of, you know, how you can get those fragile shells from over mixing. Okay. So this one, let's just paint. You wanna make sure to get all the way down. Well, it doesn't help if you close it. Don't close the lid on it. So I like to take it completely out of the holder because you wanna get it all the way to the tip or else it won't get the first bits. Like. So I'm just painting a streak down the side and then I'm gonna take a different brush and I will use my fuchsia and I'll do a different one. So I want two different colors. This one isn't even opened. I don't, I don't use gel paste very often. I prefer using my um, powder colors from the sugar. Doesn't help, guys, when you don't open it before the live. There we go. It's my least favorite thing to do because then my hands get all gelled on. Did anyone see Chrissy from Two Brothers Bakery? Um, her live or her reel today was like, just wear gloves. Basically, wear gloves, and I found it really funny. You should watch it. I am not telling the story well. Okay, 
Second color on the other side. And this is like what you see with all the peppermints um, during Christmas time. So these are the two colors and then I'm gonna put some batter in there and then I'll show you guys what we do with the other bit. Which I first saw the next, the next method um, by Jaslyn from Sugarholic Girl. She did this next thing that I was like, yes, this is genius. So much easier than coloring, oops, than coloring your batter and all that. So for this one, we don't need to do anything within here, but we will drop it into here. Heidi, do you like this one or the one where they color the, the um, other bit? So I'm gonna take the other bit, the actual piping bag. So I have one drop of black in here, one drop of fuchsia, if I can get it out. Well, that was like a lot more than I wanted, but. And then you can take a toothpick. I'm gonna use this scribe just cause it's here. And I'm just gonna twirl the black around. Sugar Bean also uses this technique. So there's some black. It's good to have a different scribe. Here, let me just wipe it off. And then I'm gonna take this fuchsia color and just push it around like this. See how it doesn't look too exciting, right? The batter, it's like, wow, what's, that? what's happening? But once you pipe it out, it looks really cool. I promise. Okay, so that's all. You just kind of work it through a little bit and then we will depending on how saturated you want the colors to be throughout work it however you want I want some white to still be present so I'm not gonna work it too much and we're just gonna put this into our piping bag so another way you could do this is you could separate your batter if you want more just a two-tone color look and um, you could also place it in saran wrap and like Xena from Majestical Macarons, you could even paint your saran wrap and add another color on there for even more dimension and fun. Okay. You have to wait a whole year. <laughs> you could make them for Valentine's Day, is it the flavor that's your favorite power of, of chi? Or is it the look? Both sides, I don't have, I haven't seen this one. Oh, okay, Heidi, you like the, the painting of the bag. Yeah, it's so fun. Okay, so let's get you guys down a little bit further down um, with the camera angle. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're piping these two different marble effects. I have so many, some, Maria, I'm the same way, lots of people texting me and stuff right now. And when someone calls me, that's when you guys can't hear me. So hopefully no one calls me. Here is the bag that has the two toned paint brush, like brush strokes up the piping bag. The first one's always a little like, uh, there we go. Some people, depending on how they want it to look, will do like a lot of wiggling with their, um, with their piping bag as they do it so it gets more um, swirled, I guess, is a good way to say it. So there's that way, or let's see in contrast. We'll 
people that just took over the, the fuchsia. See, I would not have expected this fuchsia. Let's get a little bit into it. See, it's starting to get a little bit more. Look at how deep this fuchsia took over. Let me pipe on a different tray. It's kind of blurry. Look. Can you see? The quality's not so good, maybe. Let's, let's hope it gets better so you guys can actually see. Okay, let's finish off the... If you want like a real marble look, like the black and gray and white, then um, previously, inspired by Macarons by Mo, I did some and I used white, gray, and black to add um, more dimension and then I did it with the toothpick and kind of did it around. So it's nice because the black really turns into a gray so you have like four different um, variations of grayish black in it and it looked really cool. But I was going for more of a Valentine's y theme for these marbled max. So again this is the one that I'm piping right now is the one I swirled in my batter with a scribe. So to me, the white stays a little truer when you paint the side of your of your piping bag. Because this, I mean, I did put in a little more gel than I wanted to with that fuchsia, but it definitely takes over, right? A little bit more as you put it through your piping tip. I love it though, it's so pretty. Okay. Berry Couture Sprinkle Shop. Oh, I need to look what that's about. All right. Tap it out. So here's the ones up closer to this lip. These are the ones that we painted the side of our paintbrush. I mean, our, our piping bag, sorry. And then these are the ones we just sort of dropped in a couple drops and then swirled around. Um, if you can tell the difference, but aren't these like kind of galaxy-esque? What do these look like to you? I'm trying to think. I feel like they're more galaxy than Valentine's. I'm going to pop these in the oven. What is that happening? Okay. So I popped those ones in with my air bake tray. And now I can pipe pop in these ones. So these ones kept the definite colors a lot more, right? This was the the first piping of the painted, this, these two rows of the painted piping bag, if I can use words. And then this one is the marbled effect. And if you wanted more white to stay on these ones, put a little less gel in there the gel coloring went out a little too fast for me. So, but it's still really pretty. And you didn't even have to split your batter or do anything like that. So it's a really nice introduction into multi-colored multi gels without having to do too much. 
No, I am not resting them. I'm pop, pop these in. So I'll talk. Let me just set this timer and then I can talk resting. I think I let's do 13 minutes and drop it down to 275. Yeah, so with the air bake tray, I don't rest because it's insulated. And oh, I forgot to do hearts. Boo. I'm so sad. Um well, I'll, I'll do some on my stories next. I think I have to make a batch on Friday. So if, you, if you're if you on Instagram, I will do some hearts on there. But I do have a good amount of videos with hearts. And I did a live, I think, last year on marbled hearts. Because I remember I didn't love how they turned out. So how funny. I forgot about that until just now. But I'm sad. I forgot. I apologize. I like to show as much as possible. But either way, I'm not resting because, oh, yes, ma'am. Heidi, I just love the Southern, like, yes, ma'am, you know? Like, I hope that's not, I don't have a good accent, but I just, I love manners, you know? It just sounds so special. Anyways, um, we're moving on from that. Penny. Sorry, guys. Has to happen, doesn't it? I am not resting mine because one, I'm not using an air bake tray in my convection oven. However, my convection is really good at drying the tops of my macarons, so I don't have to dry. Um, hello from Japan. So I don't have to dry air temp first. Uh, it's kind of like, if you've seen the sugar beans YouTube video. Um, sorry, my dogs, I know. It's a chain reaction. If you've seen Sugar Bean, she oven dries and it's like a really low heat and it dries the tops of her Macs and then she's able to take them out, re-put her oven back at temp and then put her macarons back in instead of having them dry at room temperature. If you have a really good circulating convection oven, that's the same thing, like that's what happens is the convection or the fan and the airflow in your oven. Stop, Penny. Penelope. Penny. The airflow in your oven is gonna dry out your tops so you don't have to rest at room temperature, which is great if you are in a humid environment. You can pop them right in before the environment can really suck or suck in air. What, what, how would you say that? Add moisture into your batter as they sit your shells. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So let me show you. Oh, look. So there's no feet yet, but they have dried on the top and you can see, uh, I don't know if you guys can actually tell from there, but I can see that it is a matte top. The tops are dried and they are now going to start developing their feet. Hopefully. <laughs> no, they, they will. Okay, let me see what you guys have said. Okay, so... I love, I know, it really is so much faster to be able to get your macarons out if you don't have to rest. It is fantastic, I agree, Heidi. Annette. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so and I know, get your popcorn out. It's gonna be some drama now. They're starting to grow some feet. I'll show you guys in a second when it's evident to the camera since my camera is not being super um, clear. But, what was I going to say? No resting is great. Wanted to say something else. Put some diamond dust on them. Okay, yeah, so let's see. I missed a lot of, I tried the color painting yesterday. So Jay, great. Oh, I'm so glad I saw that you said this. Yes, the when you paint the side of your piping bag, the excess moisture from the color can cause cracking. So we'll see if we get some in my gas stove. Um, typically in my convection oven, it's dries enough so that it doesn't, 
um, cause cracking, but sometimes in my gas stove, it will cause, because just as you're putting that excess moisture straight onto your batter, and it makes sense. So you maybe if you have to rest your macarons, then rest them a little bit longer when you add that paint brush stroke in your piping bag. Or do a little less next time, because a little bit does go a long way. I put way too much on my piping bag, in my piping bag today, um, as well as in my batter. I mean, I am, I'm just really sensitive to color. Like, I am no Barb. I think she's flipping fantastic the way she can just like manhandle her, not that that's a bad term. Um, she can make all these beautiful colors. I am like so scared to put in three drops, you know? <laughs> that's why I use powder colors, but um, it's possible. It's possible for a plain yellow pumpkin. Okay. Really good Cinderella version. <sighs> let me let me try to have a, a, a fluid tr train of thought for y'all so I'm not like bouncing around like inside my brain does. Okay. So we talked about how the excess moisture can cause cracking. We'll see if we do see that in the gas stove. Um, so it, it, yeah, it doesn't have necessarily, it's not necessarily your brand of coloring. It could also be that just that you can use less gel paste or dry them longer or try out some air bake trays because that insulation and the, the bottom is really nice when baking to help dry the tops as well. Two tray. I I did try two trays. I did try two trays in here and they didn't work. Um, I have not, I know volcanoes are just so sad. I have not tried again. Um, ooh, I, I'm getting a little like bump on one. Okay, I'll show you guys now. Um, but it didn't work in here, but I haven't tried more and I think I might be able to get it to work. So the feet are developing. Um, nicely. But I should try more with this is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Is there any tips for making hearts? So are there any tips for making heart macarons? I feel like it really depends on your, how big your template is. So if you have a super small heart, like these, I find these pretty small. They're, they're really cute though. So these are fairly small, like the equivalent to the circle, but taking out some of the circle, right? So in order to get your nice point at the bottom, you need a smaller tip. So I like to use, a, this is a six millimeter tip. I'm not sure what that would be equivalent to with Wilton, but I wanna make sure I'm just pressing out, if it's this small, pressing and filling this and bringing it down and then stop pressure and just keep bringing your batter down and then start again up here and bring down, stop pressure a little sooner because you already brought this one down all the way because if you do too much batter on top of each other down at the tip, it's just going to get way too fat. So less batter is better as you go down. And then using a little scribe to bring it down to a, a little bit of a point. Personally, I don't like a super pointed tip just because it gets really crunchy. Let me show you guys. Sorry, I forgot to show you. Really, really quick. Feet are developing, no cracking as of now. And that's the magic of the air bake tray. Like we did not have to even wait for it to dry. It's so fancy. Okay, resetting the timer for, I did 10 minutes first on my gas stove and I flipped it around for even baking and I'm doing nine more minutes and I'll check that out. On here, we have three more minutes, 
but this oven, little toaster oven is really efficient and I bake on the turbo convection setting. So it bakes really fast. So about 13 minutes is how long I bake all together in this. Oh, piping tip down. Now, if you have a bigger heart, like a nice big one, then I like to outline the heart and then fill in, you could either do it like um, centric, sitch. you can go like around the heart and go in and do smaller, 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 if that makes sense. Um, centric, I don't, can't think of the word, but I like to do, I like to do that outline if it's a big heart and then just keep going all the way till you hit the center outlining 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 into the center that's what i prefer with that oh thanks they look satisfying yay um any advice about whipping the egg whites and really knowing when it's perfect i'm afraid i'm afraid what is this? Sorry, I'm, I missed where I was reading. Oh, I'm afraid it's not stiff enough. Okay, that's a great question. When you're whipping your egg whites, I recently did a video and it seems like there is a fairly wide range of meringue strengths that is going to work to make and produce good shells. But in order to know that it's going to give you the most concentric, thank you, Corey, that was killing me. Um, in order to give you the most time, it's really nice it, to have a nice stiff one. So what does stiff peaks look like? If you saw in my bowl, as I was, um, with the beater it's different, the hand mixer, but with a hand mixer, as you're pulling up, it clumps up around it, so it comes up with your beater. That's a nice indication. And then the striations of all around the bowl are nice and stiff and not moving. Um, a lot of the times with a hand mixer, you're just working the middle and it will get nice and stiff and you'll pull up and it's like, oh, it's nice stiff peaks on my beater, but then in the bowl, it's a little bit soft on the outside and that happens frequently and then it gets broken down really fast once you start putting the almond flour in and confectioner sugar. If you're using a KitchenAid or any type of stand mixer, I always, I, I look for the meringue to, I can't think of words right now, the meringue to actually clump around my whisk. So when I pick up my entire, like um, if you have like an artisan KitchenAid, this comes up and it brings the beater with you. The meringue comes with the beater. I like it clumped around it and nice and stiff. Um, so a good way, if you're unsure if the whole amount of your bowl meringue in the bowl is stiff, you can take your beater and mix it around and then pull back up and you'll want it to be nice and stiff. If it's super long, like you pulled out a ton and it curves over a little bit, try to get a little less off, get a little off of it. Because if it's really long, meringue is going to like fall over. Look at this guy did get a nice, I don't know if you can see, but he got a bubble on him from the excess moisture. So it definitely happens after, even after I said, hey, look, it's not going, it doesn't even do this in my beautiful toaster oven. But um, you can tell the difference since baking with the painting of the brush. I mean, painting of the piping bags relative to the mixing in the bowl with the scribe, right? Pretty. Both pretty, they're just different looks. Whenever someone types in about a foot fetish in the the chat, it makes me approve approve your your comment. Uh, good old macaron makers. That's what we care about. Okay, drag it down, squeeze, and squeeze, not squeeze it down. 
Perfect. Yeah. Fox's farm. Great. I have a blue drop mat. Okay. A blue drop mat is about the same heart shape size as the, the flower girl one. Um, it's a little bit pointier. It looks like, yeah, it's a tiny bit pointier, but it makes a really a cute heart too. I've used the blue drop. That's what is on the opposite side of this. I've got, let's see if I can pull it out without burning myself. Let's see, um, it's a little bit sharp, sharper than the flower girl mat, but it is, it makes a super cute little heart. And yeah, use a small tip for that then. And just like Fox's farm said, um, great way to say it. Pull, drag down that tip don't push any more batter out. Once you pipe those those tops of your heart, just stop piping and bring that batter down. I like that, that way of saying it. I used gel and it seemed okay as I added it to my meringue. I'm gonna get gel kind. Yeah, gel, I, I think on the topic of colors, gel paste and powdered colors both have their place in macaron making. Like I, I enjoy both. Um, I know some of my friends exclusively use powder like Tiana from Whisk, ATX on Instagram. Um, super talented baker if you haven't checked her out. She uses exclusively the Sugar Art products and does great. I like to have both options around just cause it's nice. Uh, and then there's other people like Barb who's just a rock star with from the Sweet Mac Shop, or Sweet Mac Shop, um, who's a rock star with colors, with gel colors. I am just skirt. I'm very scared of adding extra moisture, and that's just my thing. Okay. Where did you buy your airbag trays, and how big are they? I bought my airbag trays from Trader, no, nope, not Trader Joe's, um, Target, that's the word. but you can get them on Amazon as well. They are the big ones. So these are 16 by 20, I think. I'll show you a regular half sheet tray. Here's a regular half sheet tray. By the way, this does not fit into this. Um, too big. So if you're looking into this toaster oven, I'm gonna refrain from trying to pronounce the, the brand. It doesn't fit a lot in it at once. Um, this cute little J, JB Prince pan fits inside of here. Like it's just a little bit smaller. It's perfect for the toaster oven, but it's quite an expensive, um, it is expensive. I think I got it for $20, $22 or $25. And I mean, that doesn't sound too crazy, but for each pan, it can add up. Okay, so relative to this half sheet tray, it's quite bigger. So I think it's like 16 by 20. Can almond flour still be oily even if it doesn't look or feel oily? Let me check these and I'll get too stuffy. Um, I've got the... So how I test if they're done is when they're in the oven and just gonna press down here and I don't see any movement. Like try a, a middle one. There's a little bit of movement here. So it probably could benefit from a little bit longer, but I've already taken them out. So I'm just gonna say hopefully they're baked almost thoroughly. But it's good to test a middle one just because the middle ones are the ones that usually take a little bit longer to bake. Um, but a little 
movement is okay. And then almond flour question. Let's see here. I keep doubling myself and ending up over. I keep doubting myself and over whip. The batch got tall feet. Okay. Uh, let me answer the almond flour first and then I will get to that. So, you know, with almond, with oily almond flour, I'm not really sure because I feel like I've never actually had a batch of oily almond flour. I've never had it clump in big clumps and that's what I've been told happens when it's oily. It's, it's obviously extra moisture and it's clumped together. Never had that occur. Um, I think what might be causing these oily tops or splotchy tops could, could be over mixing or some other thing, unless you're getting really clumped almond flour. Uh, if you're at all like, oh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, Stevi, you could just dry your almond flour in the oven and see if that helps. So low temperature, like 250 for seven to 10 minutes, depending on how powerful your oven is. You don't want it toasted or anything. You just dry it out. So lay it out on a sheet tray on a silk pad or on a parchment. And um, you just want it to be like if you're toasting if you're making your own tortilla shells, or I mean like um, tortilla chips, just lay them all out, like don't have it all clumped on top of each other and evenly. That's the word I'm looking for. Spread it out evenly on the, the mat and then bake it and then let it dry completely. You don't want it to have that wet, humid moisture and then mix it with confectioner sugar. So let it dry fully and then put it all together with your confectioner sugar. So here are our marbly shells. I guess this is no rest now that I have. Ooh, you've got the you've got the piping bags. I always forget that. Yes, the flower girl piping bags as well. Let's see. Um, I I just love no rest. It really is. It really is convenient. Here are these ones. Is it blurry for you guys? These are fun. But they aren't as marbly as I would like. These are more marbled, but I feel like I would want more white. So too much gel paste. But there's still, it's, I mean, it's a great depiction of how to get these different looks. Super fun. And we didn't even have to split our batter and worry about that. Let's see. Um, there were some questions I did want to answer. Let's see what temp. So Fox, Fox's Farm, I bake at 300 Fahrenheit. Uh, I want my oven temperature, internal oven temperature around 300, 290 to 300 with my air bake trays a little higher, 305 is fine. But I, I drop my oven temp down around 290 when I'm baking in this to keep my internal temperature around 305 or 300. And then with this, it's at 275, but I, I preheat at 300 Fahrenheit. I'm like this. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. My goal is to keep my internal oven temperature anywhere between 290 to 305 Fahrenheit. I bought a small air bake tray from Amazon. I still am afraid of rusty. Brev, trying no rest though. Yeah, so, ooh, so this, there's a small air bake tray that fits into your toaster oven. That's really cool. I know it's very scary to try no resting. Like I still get really giddy. I'm like, this is, is it gonna work? And then I get really excited when I start to see feet. But it saves so much time and it's really great and you won't ever know until you try. So I suggest piping a few shells on that air bake tray of yours and just test it out and see how it works. And then you can know it won't mimic exactly a full tray, 
of piped out shells, but it will give you a good idea if it's going to work or not in that oven. Um, and then Steffi, you said it was just to see if I could rule out. Of course, I'm, I'm happy to help. Hi, Brandy. I, I hope, I hope a quick, I don't know what, what's better, like just being able to dry your almond flour and having that extra step. And I'm so glad you're here, Brandy. Or if it's like an easy, less macronaging, I don't know. Your, your Macs don't look like they're flattened out though, Steffi. So it wouldn't, I wouldn't think that you're over macronaging. So maybe it is the almond flour because you have beautiful feet. You have a nice little bubble to your macaron. We'll see though. Let me know. Keep me updated on Instagram. It's uh, there was another great question. And I'm sorry, Samira. What what I do when I okay. I like more than two color squirrels and want to use powder colored. Oh, so you're Samira saying that she likes powder colors and then she can even do multicolored with a little bit of extra egg whites. That's a great idea to mix it into, um, to moisten, because a powder color needs moisture to activate it and get it mixed up. So um, that's awesome. Put a little extra egg white powder, activate that color and move it through your batter. Cool, I love it. Chelsea, thank you so much and thanks for being here. Uh, did you... I feel like there was somebody else. If you wanna ask your question again, I feel like I missed it. Uh, something about, did I talk about the over whipping of your egg whites? Uh, is it Sam, Simha? If you, if you are resting your macarons and you have those tall feet, you could maybe rest a little bit less and the feet might be smaller. Let's see if there's one of these I can crack into. They don't feel very full. No, they're not very, they're not like extremely full. It cr cracked down when I, see there is a gap. And that was on my, my uh, toaster oven, which usually does better. I don't wanna crack them all. So I'll see which ones don't have a partner. These ones work well together. Okay. Try to crack it open. Ah, well, I pushed it down way too much. That's not gonna show you a good, a good show. Either way, they're not completely full. Like that is not, but does it taste good? Yeah. That's more my oven temperature than the coloring or marble effect. And with all of that coloring that I put in, I can taste that fuchsia. I can, uh, it was too much. I can taste the bitter aftertaste from, um, you remember when I dropped in? Cause that was a, not a ton of batter left in my bowl when I mixed in the, the two different colors. So, I get that bitter taste down here and it's on my the tip of my tongue too, like back here on the sides of my tongue. I don't like that. Too much of the fuchsia coloring. I'm super sensitive to it though, so. Okay, Heidi, you have a question. Can you use macaron mats the same way you do silt pat mats? In, in what way, Heidi, can you? Can you use macaron mats? You can definitely use them for other things. Is that what you mean? Macaron mats. Will you elaborate for me, Heidi? Oh, did she do a live on Hollow Max? She the best. 
I gotta check it out. Um, I can taste, I can taste the coloring. Okay. Someone else had something. I can't find egg white powder locally. So if you can't find egg white powder locally, uh, it's a good website if you don't have Amazon or if you um, are in Canada and don't have the same options as US. Um, then you can try Modernist pa Pantry, I think is what it's called. Modernist, it's a great website for Modernist, modernistpantry.com, yeah. It is a wonder. It has egg white powder on there and it has a lot of other cool ingredients as well. Muscat, hi Muscan, I am done. We made some macarons. We have these ones, which are a little bit more um, separate colors for the marbling effect. And then there's these that's like swirled more throughout, less white. Can't get them, I oh, can't hold them both. Okay. All right, let's see here. What kind of tray did you use in the toaster oven? This is a French steel mat. It is really heavy and um, it, it just like has a tiny little lip, but not really too much of a lip. It's nice for airflow and it's from JB Prints. These guys, you want me to break it open like this? There, uh, let's see, is that focused? There's a gap here. If you can see that. Oh, I keep ruining it as I try to break them. I keep ruining it. This is the white more of the white. I'm like trying to find maybe the, the newer. This is from the other tray. Yeah, of course. I'm trying. Trying to show you guys the gap. Pretty significant gap, but once you fill it up, it's really not gonna be that noticeable. I'm more concerned about the amount of color I'm tasting. So that isn't, it's not you, it's not an issue if you don't put too much on your, um, in your bowl, that was my bad. It was too big of a goop gunk that came out. Okay, um, what? I think I asked the answer them, right? When you when I use my air baked pans in my gas oven, it leaves the center slightly underbaked. Maria, uh it where's the heat source? You might want to play with the rack positioning in your oven. So perhaps moving your rack either a little bit if it's slightly underbaked towards the heat source. And then hopefully that will help without having to bake longer and maybe not browning. And if it still is browning, but you want it to be baked fully, to put some parchment over at the last minute or whenever you start seeing typically where the browning starts, like 30 seconds before that, you don't wanna put the parchment on when it's the feet aren't solid though, because then your feet are going to collapse a little bit with the weight of parchment. Even really thin parchment does weigh down your macarons. Um, tips for baking. <sighs> um, tips for baking in a hot, humid environment. I have 
I'm not in a hot environment, but I'm in a humid environment. It's raining outside right now. If you can see, it's stormy out there, very cloudy. Oops. And I run, as I break everything, you guys, I run my dehumidifier. I'll show you that. So I run this bad boy. It create it sucks out the moisture and fills up this tank. And then I close all my windows. If you're um, in a hot environment too, you can run that AC, but you can't have the windows open because all of that moisture from outside is gonna come in. And then I like no rest. I like no rest method so that you don't have to have your shells just seeping up the environment and the excess moisture as they wait and sometimes it causes them to break down. You bought one, Heidi? Isn't it so nice? I feel like a dehumidifier just changed the way I think about macarons too because like, you know, you can really see what humid humidity level is in your house, what tends to be a problematic level of humidity which for me is anywhere above like 55 to 57% humidity. So if I have a higher percentage in my home than 55 to 55, 57%, I just let it run a little bit longer before I start baking. Yeah, it's a game changer. It might be all in my head, but I, I really love it. How many pints? I don't know. I'm not sure, but I have my model on my Amazon storefront. If you want to check out what it is, it would probably say in the description of it. Um, okay, I'll lower it again, thank you. Yeah, I hope it helps, Maria. That's such a, it's always so hard to figure. It took me a little bit to get used to air bake trays because they do bake a little differently than um, a, a normal aluminum tray like flipped over. So it will take a few times, but I definitely suggest playing with the oven rack um, where it's laying in, in your oven relative to your heat source or um, doing a little bit less or more baking depending on what's going on with it. I have to run. Okay, me too, Corey. Thanks for being here. Remember, don't put too much color in your macarons. No, um, I'm just extremely sensitive to that bitter taste when you have too much coloring. So, um, do you use parchment paper? I do sometimes. Definitely depends on my mood. Uh, I usually save my parchment for when for an occasion, I don't know why, but like I don't use it all the time, but I like parchment. It just doesn't keep the circular shape as much. So I usually tend to use my reusable silicone mats, but parchment is great too. I just don't wanna throw it all away all the time. Um, Vanita, I prefer Amoretti strawberry. Um, Lorraine's strawberry, Lorraine's or Lorraine, Lorraine's probably is how most people say it. Um, it's a little fake, but, and I hear, I haven't tried Amoretti's wild strawberry, but I hear that one is a winner. But I, I'm trying to remember if I used the Lorraine's one in my video and now I want to rewatch it. Because whatever I did use there, there, it wasn't bad. So um, if you don't want to wait for like an Amoretti package in the mail, I think that one is just fine, especially when you add the freeze dried strawberries too. So either one, I think you'll be fine. You might personally need to try both of them, but I hear wild strawberry Amoretti is a great option. I've never tried it though. I'm sorry, like I just talk so, it's like, get to the point, you know? Okay. Heidi's got some stats right there. If you are interested in a dehumidifier. Oh, she, she 
that's from mine. So Heidi, you you endorse Lorraine's, right? Like or Lorraine's. I don't know why I'm saying Lorraine. Anyways, is it good, Heidi? <laughs> I think I use a little bit too, and it was good. And that right there, Heidi put the dehumidifier information right there for you guys. So 22 pints, Steffi. Okay, my friends, I'm gonna go because I am very challenged right now. <laughs> uh, guys, Heidi, I know you don't wanna, a little bit goes a long way for any type of compound flavoring. So, you know, any, if you overdo any compound flavors, they're gonna taste yucky, right? So you just wanna make sure you do the appropriate amount. And I love Amoretti because it does tell you a ratio of like 5% in, in baked goods or this percent. So it's nice and easy. And I tend to go overboard, I think, with like a teaspoon of Lorraine's or something. So it, it really is good. Teresa, hello. You're just coming in for the awkwardness and we'll dance it out. But we made some marbled macarons. So we got two different types of marble effects. These are more of like um, abstract tri-colored macarons and this is more of a marbled look I would say. Okay. Um, thank you. I am going to say goodbye and I'm so glad you guys joined. Um, takeaways from this, there are multiple ways of doing um, marbled macarons and you just gotta figure out what you want your end look to really look like. There's also, if you check out Mag Majestical Macarons, Zena has this awesome technique where she paints the inside of the silicone, um, of the plastic wrap, which is really cool too. Um, for me, I, in this live, I used a little bit too much of the coloring. You saw it plop out, or if you're late, you didn't see it plop out, but a good blob of it did. And I can taste it at the end, which I don't like, especially if I were to be giving that to my customers. So be careful with coloring, but it's a great way to be able to um, get colors into your batter without separating and having all that fuss for um, mixing in your stuff. Okay, thanks so much for being here, you guys. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoons, evenings for the East Coast and beyond for the world. And I'll talk to you guys later. I did that, yeah. Cracked macarons definitely can happen from the excess moisture, yeah. All right, goodbye my friends. Have a good rest of your day. Happy Mac May.